it's slightly colder in here. Yeah, not not. We're not cold by any means, but it's cooler, cooler than it was. Yeah, cooler than it was last week. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our pre-match press conference to preview our game against Tottenham this weekend. We'll start off with Anton Sky. Hi. Hello. Um, as, <coughs> as quite often it's the case at Everton, a couple of off-field matches to start with. If that's why. First off. No. I'm surprised when anything gets blown. Um, let's start obviously. Look. With the ownership situation, you know, John Text has been having communications with Farhan Shearer this week. I just wonder if they, you've had received any updates and whether you had a chance to no, talk to him when he was here. No, um, I'm against popular belief. I don't, I'm not always in the loop with them sort of talks about the, the total ownership of the club. Um, I do know somewhat, but not in this case. And I, I know he's around as possibly a, a buyer of the club, but not actually anywhere near me as such. How are you going to feel when someone taps you on the shoulder and says, Sure, got it only done. it only really affects um, what I do is is about the possible future of budgets and money really you know because when you think about it we've, we our job is still to stay tuned in the fact we need to win football matches you know and I made sure that we saw through all the challenges of last year by sticking to that and encouraging the players and the staff to stick to that so outside of that it doesn't change that much until it comes usually not always but it might be a change of strategy of course but that usually somewhere down the line involves finance usually mentioned budgets um, we're obviously getting towards, towards the end of the transfer market do you expect a busy sort of final week no I think it's unlikely um, you know we've worked very hard in the market we bought in players who we think can develop into the Premier League you know they're not all um, game ready you know straight away but we think they're good players and can, and can grow into the club and to the Premier League you know if you take you know Tim's done ever so well I think Tim's minutes were about I think league wise I think he had about two games worth of minutes last season um, you know, Jasper about eight, Illy like 17 or something. So, you know, there's a there's a long way for them guys to get to full Premier League speed, but we believe they're very talented players. So, Jake slightly different, he played a bit more. Um, and then when you think of that and tr working very hard to get them deals done um, and losing players as well, then there's not much more wiggle room, I don't think. Um, and if there is, then that's helpful. If there's not, then that's the way it is. I suppose the wiggle room increases if on this sort of you know more senior sort of more big name assets does move on do you see that sort of as being unlikely though? not at the moment unless i'm told any different according to the market but not at the moment it's um i think the the, the club seem pretty steadfast with the business we've done um shifting the sands of football who knows you know what happens but generally i think it's in a, a place where everyone said right okay we, we are where we are type thing finally on that kieran trippy is a name that's come up today is that a player that He's one of many names that's come up here. Um, as if by magic his name comes up when we haven't got a right back available. It's funny though, isn't it? What's in the studio? Uh, no, yeah, it does do it. It's incredible. Look, how big is this game at this weekend? They're all big games. I mean, I've said it ever since I've been here. Every game's a big game. There's People always uh, laugh at me for saying that, but it is. It's Everton Football Club, regardless of any. The rules and reasons all go out the window. I've learned that. It's about winning. It's about taking on the next challenge. It's about reacting on this occasion. Um, you know, the, the storyline changes very quickly here, so we've got to correct it. It's, it's a tough task, going down to a very strong Tottenham side. We know that. They've invested heavily. They had a good season last season. We're stretched, unfortunately. We're down to about 14 recognised first-team players at the minute, so that's not perfect. Um, but the challenge is right in front of us, as always. Thank you. I guess we'll go to our one up. Premier League group, yes. Talking about responding and the challenges you had to overcome last season, during that time you spoke a lot about seeing the positives and appreciating what was building behind the scenes, even if the results weren't going your way, obviously, the start of the weekend, not the result you would have wanted, but what positives can you take from it and what do you want to build on? Um, well, the, the, the positives are the sense it was a very thorough performance until two big mistakes cost us, you know, and, and even the first goal was a mistake from not being in the right position on, uh, on turnover, but the second two are, are hard as a manager and as a group to legislate for, quite obviously. Um, We've lost a few bodies in pre-season, which has been unfortunate. They're, they're searching for true fitness, so we've got to get them fit. And we've lost more who might not be available for this weekend. So that's just one end things. But what we have learned is you've got to stay steadfast to the cause and what's right in front of you. And I think we've done that. We've shown signs of doing that um, during the whole of pre-season. Because we've had more challenges, mainly with injuries and, and obviously losing players and trying to shuffle the pack. Um, 
you know, it's the ongoing challenge of what is currently the life at Everton. You know, it's never, I don't think there's been many easy rides since I've been here. Um, and we start immediately and, you know, you, you're immediately back to square one where everyone says, right, you're not doing this, you're not doing that. And that's just life at Everton. That's the way it is. Without a, an away win in the calendar year, but a new season, a fresh start, how <coughs> key to the success of the club this season will be changing that record early on? Yeah, when I got here, it was changed the away record, then it was changed the home record, and now it's changed all the records. So, like I say, this is standard for what I've learned about the club. Um, that we have to um, make sure that we're addressing both markets, at them being home and away. Um, they're both important. We are very strong at home at the end of last season. Um, we've got to make sure we provide that again. We didn't have a good start, of, obviously. Um, away games, you know, they're, they're challenges everywhere you go and you want to go to these places, particularly you'd, you'd class Tottenham currently in the top six, that's for sure, um, or the, most people would. And it's a big challenge and, you know, we, we are thin in numbers, but we have to go down there and take on the game like we always do. You mentioned some of the, the updates in the team news. Jared Branthwaite obviously was uh, played a huge role the last time you met Tottenham in the league. Um, where's he at with his recovery? And how yeah, he's still a bit away. He's, he's not close at the moment. Um, a few of the lads are getting a bit closer. Seamus is a bit closer. Um, Jimmy Garner's a bit closer, just coming back in training with the group. Tarky's got a, a maybe situation, so we're going to have to look at that going into the next game. We obviously know the right-back situation with the um, uh, suspension of Youngie as well. Um, Youssef's a bit longer term as well. Um, Patterson's a bit longer term as well. So... Still a challenge, you know, ongoing, um, and and we haven't got much uh, situation to correct it with financially. So we're just going to work with the players and and hope their fitness uh, gets back. Sorry to be in fully fit and then stay fit. Thanks, Alan. Thank you. We'll go to Julia. <coughs> You've said there then that some of the newer players are not always game ready. But given the list of injuries you've just said there, and, and now Tarkovsky being a maybe, is there a fine line? with the younger players then, or the ones that have come in with getting that experience and learning or just throwing them in? I just wondered, when do you deem them ready? And is this a case now where they may just play? Yeah, it's a tough call. The, the throwing them in idea was, was, it was never really throw them in, you know. Very rarely do managers literally do that. Um, last chance saloon, maybe, if they've just got nothing else. But you try and you try and get players when, to be fair to them, don't forget, to give them a chance when you feel they're ready to deliver. Um, because you can you can detract from a, a player's start point if you put them in it's too early and they're not ready. Um, you know the game's more unforgiving now. You know it used to be 30 years ago you put young players and everyone accepted it. Now you put them in and they're, they're well why did you put him in if he's not ready? So that's the challenge, you know, and and it's finding that balance. And I think some get um, <coughs> excuse me, you've heard me speak about two careers now. You know they they often now have a career away from the the main club, particularly Premier League clubs. They'll have a career away from that, come back to the Premier League club, and then find their way um, and if they haven't had that it can be more more difficult um, some players go straight in you know Dwight Manil who's now here when he, he was with me at the previous club we put him straight in straight out of the blue didn't have a loan just went straight in and he, and he never really came out that's few and far between now I think so it's, it's a much more difficult kind of situation to make sure they get a chance to play and make sure they've got the strength around them don't forget that they can they can have that strength to, to build from and play and therefore develop you were at the under twenty ones game at, at Tranmere as well this week. Does that mean, you know, you just said their last chance saloon that you know you're, you're very low on numbers? Are you looking to some of those younger players now to step up this weekend? Yeah, but it's not as simple as just saying step up. They all want to step up, but they've got to be ready. You know, they've got to be good enough for the challenge. The Premier League's a very unforgiving league, and like I said, the players we bought in when you look at their minutes from last season to throw them straight in the Premier League is, is very difficult. You know. And, you know, some of them have hardly played during pre-season as well, don't forget. Tim's the exception. He was with us early. So he, was, he did virtually all of everything with us. So therefore, he's adapted, he learned, he's got stronger as the season has gone on. And he looks game ready by the way he's performing during pre-season and last week when I thought he played very well. Still got the nuts and bolts to learn because he's a very young player still, particularly in the Premier League in the sense of experience. But he's shown very strong signs. So fast tracking is a is a is a is a, a risk and reward situation but you want to fast track players ideally when they're going into a very strong unit at the minute we are missing some very important players and they've proved to be very important players could you just give us an update on Delhi Ali? I know you'd said you wanted to give him some behind closed doors games and you know yeah, what he's just not ready for that yet that's all it is would, would he want to stay well, we haven't gone down that road because he's not ready to play yet he'll have to be ready to play to, to know what your future holds so he hasn't played in a long time 
Um, I just want to ask you as well, a lot was made about comments after the game uh, about fans leaving early. It, some took it as a criticism of Everton's fan base. Just I've never criticised the fans here, ever since I've been here. I was just making a, a valid point of the, the, the obvious reality. You know, you, you turn 0 down, you go 3 0 down, you've got 10 men in the Premier League. It's very difficult, that scenario, to get back from. So, you know, if you're a fan, you're going to go, well, should I get off early? So I wasn't criticising anyone. That's just a human thing, I would imagine. Um, I don't go to many games in that respect, but I would imagine if you're a fan, they go, well, don't think much is going to change in this scenario. Thank you. Thanks, Julia. We'll go to Rob with the BBC. Well, it's a short-term situation currently. Um, if it becomes long-term, that's different. But we've just been unfortunate in the sense that Young has got suspended. Shame has got a short-term injury. Let's hope so. It's seemingly so. He's going well on his recovery now. Um, so, you, you know, you, you, you're not just going to make a, a knee-jerk decision because of what might be one game. We're not sure, but it could be just this weekend. Cause, well, we haven't got the finances to do that, obviously. It'd have to be something that we think can add to the, the group longer term, not just for one game. I don't think the hope had changed. I think uh, looking at the last three seasons of this football club, every season is a hope season. It's not a guarantee. Um, you know, everyone's looking at the club and we hope for a better season. You know, we're, we've we've lost players. We've tried to adjust the squad. You know, we're we're working as hard as we can to stay competitive. So it's not about hope. It's about keeping the edge to be competitive and, and see where it takes us. That's my marker has only been to to progress, and that's what I'll be looking to do this season. Just get a team that can progress, learn, and improve. Thanks, Rob. Any further questions in the open section before we move on? No. Nope. No, nope. thank okay, you. We'll move on to the papers, thanks. It's still warm in here, but it's not as bad as normal.